All right, guys, welcome back to Basement Talk. We got another episode on the way. We have a special guest, James Heim Sarvi. Welcome in the house. We got Zach in the house, Kyler in the house, Ovase in the house. We got Christian, the new member to the team. I think I shouted him out last episode, but welcome on the podcast. Hey, good evening, <laughs> gentlemen. Don't forget yourself. Yeah, I was going to say, the hell here. are you? I'm here. Yourself. I'm here, guys. I'm always here. Cheers. Always in the same spot. Cheers, here boys. But, uh, cheers. We're going to give a cheers. We made a, a little 12. drink. Agua. He has water. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. So uh, I, I think I'm a, I consider myself the Forrest Gump of life. I'm serious. I've nice. met the craziest people. I think I've had a pretty wild, spectacular, blessed life. And, um, this conversation tonight, I, th I actually want to flip the script and concentrate on you guys and talk about you guys. I mean, I'll intertwine it with me, but yeah. what your generation has to look forward to and the responsibilities you guys have to yourselves as young men, to your parents and your family and your goals and your dreams. Absolutely. So learn from an old dude about what you're, I, I think you guys are way more advanced than I was. Yeah. Why? Okay. So, like, let's just talk about love. Your generation with love is, is trippy. Our generation, your parents' generation, we were ingrained, like, grow up, get an education, get a job, get married, have kids. That was... Well, isn't that society now, too? I, I don't think it is with your generation. Because I got married at 24, had a kid at 26, had five kids, you know. And if I had your experience of this time, I probably wouldn't get married till like 35, unless you meet oh, the right one. Absolutely. You know, if you meet the right one and there's love and everything lines up, whether it's socioeconomic class and so forth, you should marry. You know, yeah. If, if you find the right one. I think it is really crazy, the dating economics these days. I mean, especially with social media, I think that's probably one of the biggest parts that's changed the whole dynamic. Girls are even now. Exactly. <laughs> Girls are even. And they're making money on there, too. That's right. <laughs> and, 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 and don't be surprised if it's a like mystery. a really nice girl from a really nice family. And, hey, man, they got their own thing going, and they don't 100%. need you. No, that's That's crazy. a trip. It is a trip. You know, they could have college degrees, come from really nice, high socioeconomic families, and, no, I don't need my parents. I got my own thing. So you know, I'm going to go off color, yeah. and you guys can edit it out. We're the, there's a guy on YouTube or on Instagram. He, he goes around, hey, nice car. What do you do for a living, right? Daniel Mac. Yeah. Did yeah. you see <laughs> the one where a girl was driving a 488 Ferrari? Well, was she oh, my God. Car nice car. What do you do? I take pictures of my asshole. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she yeah. said. Yeah. That's what wow. she said. That's literally yeah. what she said. So, so it's really important that you guys understand what you guys want out of life, okay? Because that social expectation on me was very strong and the the cool thing is that you guys are all friends including your friends with my son yossi absolutely no one i didn't i didn't have a strong enough friend and my brothers were all scattered through the country you know, i had a brother in boston pennsylvania one in minnesota i didn't have anyone to grab me and say no dude no just date her no you don't need to get married get that out of your head yeah but you know what my older <laughs> brother he was married he had kids. My next older brother, he had kids. He got married. So I'm just telling you, watch out for each other. Protect each other. You know, it's oh, rough out sure. there, man, because these girls, they're in their own world now. Yeah, we, we, I know me and him, we find ourselves we, like. We talk about it a lot. We talk about it a lot because we all have each other's backs. We've known, like I've known this guy since we were five years old. Yeah. Obviously, Kyler's my brother. This guy's super close. Same with your son, Yossi. Yeah. We're all very Yossi. close Cherish to each other. Cherish those relationships yeah. And, yeah, for sure. and protect each other. Now, the girls that are eligible for you are all in school still. Yeah, probably. For sure. Right? Definitely. I, I was going to say that's a really interesting point because, I mean, I just turned 21, but it's weird. There's, like, I wonder how old is your wife right maybe five years is she younger she's seven years younger than there me. you go so yeah. it's like yeah. it, it is really weird. that's such she's a seven years younger than me and the lesson there was i met her before i met my first wife 
and I should have married my second wow. wife. I should have married oh, wow. her. I should have fought for her, and I didn't. But when I had that chance in the future, I did. Wow. And that matters. And that matters. And I think it's, I think it's karma and so forth, how things are going to end up. Well, everything happens for a reason. So how so. many siblings do you have? I have, we're, we're four boys. Four boys. No oh, wow. girls. And are you close with all of them? Yeah. Well, my younger brother passed away when he was 45, and he was a saint. That guy could have ran for president. He truly was a saint. And he just had an aneurysm the day after Thanksgiving uh, 2012. Wow. He collapsed. But by the way, he's still alive. I mean, he donated all his organs. He's, he's somewhere. Oh, that's his yeah. heart somewhere, his lungs are somewhere, his that's kidneys amazing. are somewhere. That's what that's what he was. We always knew that about him, though. So it's not just an old adage about the good die young. It's actually an axiom of life. Like when you finish early, they're done. Tell us about your nationality because it's oh, very yeah. interesting. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. I was born in Vietnam during the Vietnam War in wow. 1965. My mother is actually Chinese born in Vietnam. They have Chinese people born in Vietnam. And she's actually from Hanoi, which was the capital city. And in 1954, she flew to the south. When, when my grandmother, her mother said, you cannot survive here. The communists took over. You cannot survive here. She goes, what do you mean? She goes, all the servants in the house, they want to kill you. <laughs> so you need to leave. So my grandmother literally taped $10,000 equivalent U.S. dollars plus gold plus diamonds onto her body. And she flew from Hanoi to this city called Dalat with her aunt and uncle. But they were young. They were like five years older. And she was like, this doesn't work. So they actually walked from Dalat to Saigon, which took three weeks. And it was harrowing times, man. So anyway, they settled. Yeah, go ahead. No, like... They walked from, you said, from where to where? The lot to Saigon. How far is that walk? It's probably not that far of a walk, but they had to hide from the communists who were trying to kill people and rob people. Jeez. And also the nationalists who were seeing anyone on the road that you could be a communist and they would rob you and 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 kill you and rape you and so forth. It was, it was scary times. That is... Crazy. Yeah, so so they settled they settled in Saigon, but Saigon's a big city. It's called Ho Chi Minh City now. And they settled in Chinatown because they're Chinese. And they bought a building. The first floor they turned it into a sewing factory, kind of like basement productions. Yep. <laughs> the second floor was the Chinese manager of the sewing factory. The third floor was my mom's aunt and uncle. And then my mom was the youngest one, so she got the fourth floor and there's no elevator. <laughs> Got to go up and down, up and down. So anyway, I was born there. She met my dad. My dad was in the Air Force. He was a crypto guy. And my mom from 1962, wait, 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 wait. not crypto. Crypto? Cryptology, code oh. breaking. Oh, I was like, wait, wait, that far back? Yeah. <laughs> he must be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here. Anyway, anyway. So my dad, as a greenhorn during that time, had guard duty. And this Vietnamese young girl, because they all look young, would get dropped off and she would flash him her U.S. military ID. It's like, how could you have a military ID? Wow. And then she would go through, and then she'd go through this gate where no U.S. GIs like my dad were allowed to go through because it was the CIA annex. So my mom worked for the CIA from 62 to right before I was born in 65. Wow. And she was training girls to go north and spy for the U.S. It was pretty crazy. And, nice. then, and, then, and then my dad had to leave the Air Force, go through what he had to go through, come back and get us, and which was a whole miracle in itself. So we actually lived on Guam. You guys heard of Guam? Of course, yeah. It's like 12 hours past Hawaii in the middle oh. of the ocean. Never heard of it. Really? Guam? I swear I haven't. One of the U.S. territories? Yeah. No. How long were you there for? Five years. Wow. My dad worked for NASA at the U.S. tracking station, and they were sending people to the moon. And so there's, there's famous pictures of my dad giving a tour to Neil Armstrong where he came to the tracking station. And I have his, the only thing I got from my father as an inheritance was his certificate for participating with Apollo 11, which was cool. So the moon landing's real? <laughs> you know what? Remember, I am Forrest Gump. 
So I used to give my father shit about that all the time. <laughs> dad, no way. Yeah. He's like, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then, dad, no way. I mean, did you see the evidence? And I made him watch the evidence. And later on, um, when we lived in Bel Air, I became friends with a guy named Michael Wolper, whose dad was David L. Wolper. So if you go to the USC film school, you go to the David L. Wolper film school. And David L. Wolper was a famous documentarian and the U.S. government contracted him to, hey, go to the secret uh, studio in England and do all this shit and make better pictures because if you see the original lunar landing when Neil Armstrong's flying this thing dead stick, you know, this like ultimate gaming thing, <laughs> he, he literally flew it to the moon. It's all grainy and crappy. And the U.S. government wanted clear beautiful pictures to sell the budget of NASA to the U.S. people. So they contracted David L. Wolper, and he went out and did all this stuff. That's why there's contradictory stuff on the Internet. And who told me that? His son, Michael, who's my age, wow. a couple of years older than me. And he says, yeah, my dad actually did that. So both are true. The fake ones are fake, and the moon landing really happened. Wow. And that's... Think about that. That's weird. Yeah, that's, that's that, that might be viral right there yeah. because I don't know if anyone's heard information like that before. Yeah, that's wild. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So David O. Wolper is super famous. If you Google him, you know, he, he the black and white Superman movies or show all the way through Roots, all the way through the, the 23rd Olympiad, which was 1984. Were you guys even born in 84? No. Okay. We had the Olympics here in L.A. and David O. Wolper. Um, was the president of the, I think, the IO, the International Olympic Organizing Committee. And by the way, we're in Irvine, California, right? Yep. So the trippy part about David L. Wolper is he lived in Bel Air, and on one side of him was uh, Donald Bren. Do you guys know who Donald Bren is? Yeah, Donald Bren is the Irvine. owner of the o Irvine Company. Right. Okay. On the other side of David L. Wolper was Peter Uberoth. Have you heard of him? So he was the former baseball commissioner, and he was a president of the, the U.S. Olympics. Anyway, those three guys actually worked out where they bought the Irvine company away from the Irvine heirs, and then Donald Brand actually did a great move. You should read the history because it's fascinating. He took the assets that he bought, and it's supposed to belong to everyone because it was publicly traded. He borrowed against it to buy back everyone's shares. And now he's a single shareholder of the Irvine Company and one of the wealthiest men in California. Oh, yeah. And don't sure. they live down in Irvine Cove? I did I did visit one of their beaches on California. Once. Yeah, he went Which over there and saw. In Irvine Cove, there's a little spot private down there. Beach. I don't know if you've been there, Zach, but yeah. There's no such thing as private beaches in California, but Irvine Company's got one, pretty much. Well, the Irvine, <laughs> Irvine family, right? Yeah, Irvine, Irvine family. family. They have like two or three houses in there. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's insane. I mean, it's, it's probably the most beautiful place I've ever seen, Irvine Cove. I don't know if you've been, I've been there. In there. Where is yeah. Irvine Cove? I've been in there. You it's probably sold cars to people Crystal in Cove, Irvine Cove, right yeah, there. Yeah, it's the first community on the right as you're going south. There's That's a beautiful the house on the edge. And inside there, inside there. Oh, okay. There is a house there that the Saudis own. Oh. And you'll see Ferraris with KSA plates. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And they're the kids. Remember a few years ago, some kid, some Saudi was burnt, doing burnouts in Beverly Hills? It was one of those kids. He <laughs> took his car from here, went up there, and was doing burnouts right off the Rodeo Drive. Wow. wow. Yeah. It's yeah, on the internet. Uh, Where's this community? Is it right after the Shake Shack? On it's the right? So past the Shake Shack, you, you go down Mastro's up. Ocean Club. Oh, and then you go all the way you know up. that cool view. You know that before you get to Emerald Bay. Oh, yeah. 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 It's the yeah, community right before Emerald right before Bay. Okay. I, the I beginning know. of Laguna yeah. Beach is Irvine Right Cove. where you see that house on the that house. Yes. That house, I heard that. That house, I heard, was Ralph, Ralph Lauren. Lauren. Ralph Lauren. That's the rumor. Yeah. But it's Are not. Are you sure? It's not. It's not. But that used to be the one of the Irvine houses. Yes. Yeah. You are right. That's wow. a, yeah. That house is going to fall in the water one day. So, anyway. It's like right on the uh, cliff. You know, so, your dad was born in the U.S. Your mom was born in Vietnam. Yeah. Here comes James. Yeah. When did you immigrate to? Uh, I was I was born in March and I, we left in October. So we went to Guam first. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, and how we old, were there for five years. How old were you in Guam? I was from two, six two months. months old to okay. five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. And then you, when you moved 
to the U S mainland, the mainland, we moved to Austin, Texas. Oh, wow. How and long my were dad you finished his degree because he knew that the Kennedy Johnson space program was over with Nixon. A lot of stuff politically happens and it just changes the world, man. It really does. So he went back to school. He finished his degree in two years. Well, wow. he was valedictorian of the class of 72 at the university of Texas. And then we moved to Annapolis, Maryland. So I'll just go real fast. We went Vietnam, Guam, Annap uh, Austin, Texas, Annapolis, Maryland, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Dallas, Texas, Dallas, Texas. We moved to Egypt for a few years to wow. Cairo. And that was a trip. How old were you? I was 10. That's 10 to 12. Insane. 10, 11, 12. I want to go to Cairo. We're going to go one day. I don't know if you want to go to Cairo. I mean, we do not hey, go no offense yeah, to any Egyptians. I had a blast in Egypt. It's a <laughs> crazy place. I love it. it. And I learned so much. Part of what makes me really good in the car business that I like to grind and negotiate for hours, go to Egypt, man. Go Those try to buy a chessboard like that yeah. and go see. I mean, if you do it right, it's going to take you a couple hours, but you're going to get it for three bucks. <laughs> wow. That's how it's nice. done. So you kind of learn your sales, that's where I, your that's negotiation. That's where it was implanted in me. But you've always had, like, I feel like because of your upbringing, you have that personality too. I, but I did was, not have it, man. No? Uh, so we go to Egypt. It's summertime. We go to the pyramids. And I would love to see you guys at the pyramids, okay? So they first thing... They say is free, free. They bring a camel, free. Nothing's free. Free, photo free. <laughs> yeah. Photo free. So my <laughs> older brother gets on a camel. <laughs> He's up there in the freaking hot sun. It's like one o'clock in the afternoon. And the guy says, bakshish, bakshish, <laughs> bakshish. If you want to get off the camel, give me a tip. My oh brother's my up there. I'm looking at him. Like, Dude, why don't you just jump down? He goes, I'm freaking 10 feet up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that word. How you can get down. And, that's a good hey. trick. <laughs> my dad, my American dad is negotiating with this guy in, in Cairo. Hey, let my son down. He's like, bakshish. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was great, man. What if you say, hey, I'll give you, I'm, just put me down. No, no, no. They're going to make first. you pay first. Dude, they've been hustling tourists for a thousand years, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. What bakshish. if you have it in your hand and they're, and no, you're no, like, no, they're not stupid. They know every <laughs> trick oh, in the book. Oh, man. They know every trick in the book. So then my mom feels bad for my little brother, and she's like, hey, John, you want to go on a donkey ride? I'm like, have fun, John. They get on a donkey ride. They were gone for an hour. You know how long it takes to get around and circumnavigate the whole pyramid? You the said pyramids that once in a massive, podcast, right? man. You're saying one pyramid or the, all three? One pyramid. It's one wow. pyramid that's 45 it's, minutes. Yeah, yeah donkeys on are a donkey, fast, you're bouncing either. around. Wow. I go, hey, Dad. Uh, can I have the keys to the car? He's like, what do you want the keys to the car for? I go, one, it's 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm hot. I'm going to get in the car, turn on, and I don't want to deal with this. That, that was my first And this reaction. was you at like 10, 12? 10. Wow. Yeah. So you're in Egypt, and then how do you get yourself back to the U.S.? Okay, that's, that's good, especially since you're asking because you're Persian. So my dad, <laughs> we take a vote. My brother wants to get back to Dallas because of sports and whatever. And we take a vote. And my dad's got a contract to go to Tehran. I want to go to Tehran. I research everything I could on Tehran. I want the food. I want the culture. I want the architect. I want sure. to go see Isfahan. <laughs> I want to go see, I want to see the Caspian. I want to see the mountains. I want to see it all, right? Sure. And my dad says, okay, you guys go back to Dallas, sell the house, pack the stuff, and come to Tehran. I'm like, cool. And, so, and this was all before the revolution. This is 78. Oh, this already 75, happened. 76, oh, wow. 77. And now 78, we're supposed to go to Iran. And my brother's a wrestler, and they have wrestling in Iran. They have a great wrestling program. They, they still from do, them yeah. to this day. Yeah. So, so it's right before, it's like a week before Thanksgiving. And my dad calls. And he goes, put me on speaker. We had a Radio Shack speakerphone, which we thought we were hot shit. He goes, kids, I'm coming home. This is a bad situation over here. I don't think the country's going to last. So I'm coming home. So I unpacked the house. We just packed the house. What are you talking about? Or, you know? So he came home. We didn't go to Iran. Wow. But from that, that was the seed of my love of, of Iran. So I, I, all my, you know. You they know, do. all my friends are Iranian, right? Yeah. I have a lot of Iranian friends. You do. And I love, I love the culture, and I love the little secrets that you guys have. 
like the word tarof. You guys know what tarof means? No. That's when you're with a Persian guy. Please don't be offended. You're with a Persian guy. And they're like, no, I'll pay it. They really don't want to pay it. So you do this, <laughs> <laughs> you do this dance. You play this back and forth You do game. this back and forth. No one really wants to pay it. <laughs> that's yeah. called tarof. Oh, that's yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Am I right? You're right. Cost right. cash. It's like, I want to pay. We secretly don't want to pay. No but we want to make it seem want, like. No one wants to pay. pay. It's <laughs> our treat. You know, no, no, no. I got it. I got it. It's like that. So and then someone comes in. No, I got it. It's like, oh, it worked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, my mom did something really mean to me in Egypt. So we found a butcher. Okay, we lived in a place called Heliopolis, which means City of the Sun. And uh, there used to be this British athletic club. It's still there. It's called the Heliopolis Club. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story in a moment. And behind the circle is like a roundabout. You guys are going to go to England. You know, the roundabout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a butcher shop in the back. So my mom used to go on Friday. She would give me money, and she would never give me enough money. <laughs> and she'd tell me to go. Purposely? To, yeah. Okay. To make me learn to negotiate. So I'd wow. go to the steak guy, and I didn't have enough money. <laughs> and the guy would look at me like, no, more money. And I'd sit there for two hours. <laughs> Two hours, like a dumb ass American kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and it was wild. The scene was wild, man. They would chop up, they would butcher the cow, they throw the, the tail in the air. Fifty cats would attack the tail. It was a trip. <laughs> People are coming and going while you're. Oh waiting yeah, to get I'm just sitting there like a dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> and you remember this just vividly. Oh, you don't forget this. Yeah, and so I, I'm trying to negotiate with this guy in my broken dumbass Arabic, and he's <laughs> laughing at me. Oh, well, everyone's laughing at me. Like, they know that my Chinese mom didn't give me enough money on purpose to torture me for two hours. So that's why, hey, you want to grind it out? You want to negotiate? Let's go. We got wow. all the time in the world. And what'd you do at 10 years old? Did you just say, look, I don't have enough? They oh. knew that the whole thing was staged between my mom and that guy. <laughs> I was fucked. <laughs> that's fucked. funny. Yeah. That's probably why when you're, like, you've been so good in the car business, though. It's it definitely is young a age, very like, big contributing factor. That. Sure. So you go back to Dallas, and then when do you... Come to California? Come to California. 79. Yeah. Oh, so not long after. Yeah. yeah. And then where do you go in California? We moved to Yorba Linda, California. No kidding. Oh, cool. I grew up in Anaheim Hills. Yeah. So. You were across the freeway. So I we were the most the eastern street... At that time, it was all orange groves in Yorba Linda. So I went to Esperanza oh. High School. Oh, no kidding. In our, We're in, in the same 40th, school district. Our 40th reunion is coming up in next month. No, August. Go? I'm going. Yeah. Nice. I've always wondered, how do they contact you about reunions? Facebook, man. Really? You know, all of us old timers, we're on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to tag so us you Facebook. you used to live by where the Honda dealership is now. Yes. I Close. got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, very nice area. It's very established now. It's also very quiet. It's yeah. dead. Older yeah. demographic. Dude, it wasn't dead then. If you, if you ever watch Fast Times at Ridgemont High, did you watch that no, movie? No, It's one of the greatest, most iconic Mountain teen State. movies. You got to watch it. That was our life. You know, there's Spicoli who comes out of this VW van. They're all smoked out. You know, it was wild. We had the wildest parties, and it was crazy. I used to have long hair when I was younger, and one of my baseball coaches used to call me Spicoli. Yeah. Yeah. You guys need to watch it. <laughs> Sean Penn was in it. It's a crazy movie, and it's all it's coming of age story. And <laughs> there's, there's How were you in high school? Were you like me? a player? Me? I feel like you were with all that bakshish, bakshish, all okay, the negotiating, so, so you know? I, I'm the new kid, right? I'm the new kid. Yeah, because you came to yes. your window when you were like 14, I'm a freshman. 15? I'm a freshman. Okay. Oh, my God. And I'm the new kid. And I meet this super cute cheerleader. And oh she is God. hot. And she's making friends with me. She thought I was a senior. She <laughs> was a senior. Jeez. She finds out I'm a fucking freshman. She dumped my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Did you and play any sports? I played football. I wrestled. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. And... and uh, I had a thing for cheerleaders. She implanted in me cheerleaders. Yeah. And I had There's nothing great, wrong with that. I had great girlfriends. I did. I'm sure. I had great so girlfriends. So how did it all come to fruition? The start of your career, you're in high school. What led to you pursuing a career in the car industry? Okay. One, I'm a high school dropout. 
I could not take school anymore. My mother owned a restaurant, typical Asian thing. So I'm like, I can't handle this, you know. I went through a couple girlfriends, breakups, and I'm like, I'm so bored. This sucks so bad. So I had an English teacher, Mrs. Barnes, <laughs> and she was a bitch. And we would have these <laughs> debates and so forth. And anyway, I, she moved me. She moved me from right in front of her desk all the way around the room trying to like get rid of me. And one day I'm like, hey, Mrs. Barnes, this is not working for you, and it's not working for me. I'll go check out at Mr. Schaefer's <laughs> office, the counselor. I'm out. I'm out. And I just left. Wow. What grade I, were you? I was, you were a a, senior? I was a junior. Which so junior in high school. I went right to my mom. I'm going, hey, I'm working for you full time because I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you never went to college. I did, so you did a, a year at Orange Coast College. Okay. And I wanted to see, am I a dumbass? And I got straight A's. It was so easy. Wow. Wow. Comparative government, so econ. You, 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 you said you, school wasn't for you. What made you go back? No, I love school. My parents got divorced. They disintegrated. And it wasn't working, you know? Yeah, it wasn't the right time. As a matter of fact, I applied for a Naval ROTC scholarship. I made it through interview one, interview two. Interview three, I'm supposed to be interviewed by a captain on a Saturday. What fucking captain after 20 years in the Navy, he's going to interview a 19-year-old kid on a Saturday. Of course not. He sent an ensign out who's kind of our age, you know, at that time. And the guy goes, well, what do you want to do in your career in the Navy? And I told him I want to be a pilot or I want to do surface warfare. I didn't think about kissing ass because he was my age, you know? Yeah. Well, what do you want to do, sir? Oh, you want to be a nuclear engineer? Well... If I have the smarts for it, I'd like to kiss your ass and be a nuclear engineer. I didn't do that. He flunked me on my oh. interview. No big deal. Who gives a shit? So I applied to the Citadel. You guys know about the Military College of the South? No. It's called the Citadel. Before you continue, let, let me just ask you, is the reason why you did that, is is it because you wanted to pursue, uh, like like your dad's, you wanted no, to No, it footsteps? had nothing to do with or, my dad. It was who I was. I mean, being around the military and being around... You know, we lived in Annapolis, Maryland. I really should have went to the Naval Academy, but I moved to California. I made a cognitive decision when I was a freshman as a new kid. I'm going to be the most popular kid in school. Were you? Be, oh, yeah. Be that party guy, cheerleader guy. Dude. Yeah. By, okay, that was, that was spring, of, spring of freshman year. And then that same year, by Halloween, I was the dude. You must have been pretty, wow. You must have been <laughs> very funny. confident at that time, though, too, like moving around you like guy? that. You're oh, yeah. In an uncomfortable I mean, situation. You have to be you pliable. Just, you have to make friends. You have to be yeah. willing to be uncomfortable and just deal with it. Especially yeah. all the different culture you had in the It past. was great. Yeah. I actually yeah. look back. I mean, unfortunately, you did it, but these guys didn't. You did it. You moved around, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you had to deal with it. I had to move to Europe. And go to a public you, school. You actually did. Yeah, your, for a your, year. Your, your cow and beef shit was yeah, crazy in nuts. Spain. And yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had to deal with it. So That's I it. had to go to a public school. I had to hop on a bus my first day of school, and I didn't know who weird. anyone was. And I'm kind of walking down the bus, and obviously, you guys look at my skin when you're watching. I'm, I'm white, but compared to Scottish people. No, you're not white. <laughs> it was coming off of uh, Orange County summer, you know. Oh, I'm yeah. really dark and oh, tan. Yeah. Right. So I'm walking down the bus yeah. and everyone's looking at me and I'm like, oh my God, How what cool the hell that? am I going to do? But I was so uncomfortable. After three, four weeks, everyone loved me. I was the American guy. I was exactly. the most popular kid in school. So Okay, so that's, 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 insane. that's interesting because my wife, Shelly, Yossi's mom. Yeah, listen to this, guy. This, this is, is insane. crazy. She goes to Scotland when she's nine mm -hmm. and Everyone, all the guys want to beat her up. I'm like, why do you want to beat me up? And she fought every day. Think about that. All those That's, kids, you went to they're school. They're fucking pricks like, there. Physically? They're pricks. They're fucking they pricks. They attacked yeah. her, guy on girl. Yeah. And she fought for her life. No, Had straight black up. black eyes was and so forth. she was American? Exactly. They no, called they, her a fucking yank. They didn't like her. Oh, they yeah, were way. jealous of the fact that she was a yank. You were a yank. Yep. No, it's and true. It was brutal. So guy Did you get the same treatment? I got well, the same, like, the first couple weeks. It's no joke. They just look at you like, oh, fuck this American. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. The reason why I kind of got pampered a little bit more is because I, football. I was good at soccer. I was good at football. So I played for the school team. We won the state. Oh, the yeah. state, and we won whatever, the Scottish championship. So I played for my school. Um, but, fuck, I first day of school, I'm – Walking up into class, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to wear a fucking tie to school. A tie and a jacket. And I go into science Uniform. class. 
uniform. I've talked about this on a yeah, five, yeah. seven episodes ago. I walk in my first day of school. I'm walking in in front of a class of 30 Scottish kids and I ask the teacher to help me put the tie on. <laughs> and they were laughing <laughs> and at And they were ass. all laughing at me. Oh, fucking stupid American. <laughs> stupid this, stupid yeah. that. So I, I totally know what you feel like. Okay, it's so crazy. Yossi's mom was super cute. I don't want to get weird. She's nine, but she's super cute. She's <laughs> fresh from Arizona. Yeah. Fully sunbaked from Arizona. Yeah. You know, she's super cute. Yeah. And guess what? You're different. You're not like us. So guess no. what? We're going to kick your ass. And that's how it was in Scotland. It's crazy. And he was a guy by the way, what drove her to pick up the phone and call her dad and says, hey, dad, I need to come and live with you, was there was a girl. And now she's 15, turning 16. There was a girl who wanted to kick her ass and kill her. Literally. Literally, <laughs> literally. Was she a little instigator too? No, she, not at all, man. She was just she was like super cute anything. girl, and then when her boobs kicked in and her hip flared out, she, she was. She was target number one. <laughs> she was it, man, and then all the girls were jealous. Wow, that's what happened. Well, so another crazy story is his James's wife lived in Cowden Beath. She was raised in raised Cowden in Cowden Beath from what she got there when she was nine. nine. So now she's six, almost sixteen. So I. When I was 15 years old, moved to Scotland, and I played for Cowden Beath. That is the most that's random, a one is, in a billion When they say odds it's a small happen. world, that, that's what they It mean. is one of the most, we still talk about it all the time. It's and really I'm, that's awesome. I'm, we're all best friends with his son, so it just blows my mind that like the world kind of like wrapped around, and we talk about this all the time. But Cowden Beath. Cowden Beath, it's a small. Cowden fucking Beath. <laughs> Small yeah. town. So in there's Edinburgh. 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 Singular, Edinburgh. And then you cross this beautiful bridge. Mm -hmm. and you On the other side is Dundee. That's where. Dundee, yeah. Dundee is. Dundee is kind of in the corner. You have Fife, which is like. Fife a, is a county. Fife is a county. You have like St. Andrews. Then you cross the bridge and it's Dundee. Yeah. And it's just a. It's Scotland. It's a little tiny village. Yeah. It's a. Scotland. Scotland is. It's Scot all tiny villages. It's tiny villages, but still, Scotland's kind of big. Like, what are the odds? Like, it's a tiny village. You could have played in Glasgow. It, you could have played in Aberdeen. You could have played absolutely, anywhere. Ab but anywhere. you ended up in Cowden. Cowden <laughs> Beath. And I've been yeah. to the stadium. I've been to the Tesco in there. Been <laughs> <laughs> it's her best friend worked at the Tesco for Tesco 20 years that I've been to. So it's just, it's a crazy kind of story, but, um, no, going back to like you being that guy in high school and stuff, but you not wanting to go to school and not wanting to, or doing, you I actually dropped out love of school, you love school, but, but not but that thing. Yeah. No, that was sure. not fun. That yeah. was not interesting. We, yeah, we were at sucked. the part where you were going to the Citadel. Oh yeah. 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 So I applied to the Citadel. I get Straight A's at Orange Coast College. I applied to the Citadel, and they sent me this beautiful letter. You are accepted to attend the Citadel, the military college of the South. So I sit down with my father, and I said, hey, Dad, look at this. And By the way, we were living on a boat at the time, a 45-foot Columbia sailboat in Alameda Bay. Long oh, Bay. really? Bro, True story. Wow. My parents got divorced. My dad bought a boat, and we're sitting at the dinette, and I, I turned the, the, the letter around and go, read this. Because what the fuck is this shit? You know, <laughs> you were expecting to get like his great job. You got right. into the Citadel. I go, Dad. I only need one thing from you. He goes, What's that? I go, I need the first first right. year's tuition, and I'll do my best to get an ROTC scholarship in half the time. He goes, No way. These fucking people down there, they'll turn you into a racist. I go, me a racist? I'm half Vietnamese. What are you talking about? He's like, no, these are fucking evil people. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is this is the Citadel, man. This is West Point of the South. He goes, exactly. I go, well, don't worry about it. I already took care of it. He goes, what do you mean? Because my grandmother, his mother, lived in Charleston. That's where the Citadel is. I already talked to grandma. She said she'll take care of it. No, she fucking won't. He picks up the phone. Don't you fucking dare. She, he shoots me down. True wow. Story. Yeah. True story. So what do you do from that point? All right. So at that point, I take my, I take my transcript to Santa Ana, go to the Army. I just read this book called Chicken Hawk. It's about this military. It's about this pilot in Vietnam, and he flies choppers. And I go into the Army recruiter office, and I go, you still have more in aviation? He goes, yes, we do. You got to take this test. You got to do this. You got to do that. I do it all. I take the test. He goes, you qualify. Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I go, great. I go, when does school start? He goes, January. January? This is April. You know, I'm 20 years old. Yeah. You know what happens in those six, seven months? A lot. 
I get in the car business in June. I actually go. I actually go to my mother's attorney, who's still my attorney to this day. I go to I go to Joe Carpello, who's in Brea. I go, Joe. It's summertime. School's out. I need a job. He goes, Don't look for me for a job. He goes, Why don't you go in the car business? He goes, I put myself through law school in the car business. Go in the car business. As a matter of fact, we'll get you a job. So he calls up his buddy who just graduated law school, who's doing family law. He goes, yeah, I'll make a call for you. You can get a job at Carson Toyota. I don't want to sell cars. I think I'm better than selling cars. I don't want to sell cars. And Joe tells me, hey, man, you're going to be great at it. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in the car business. 38 years later. Still yeah. in it. Yes. Well, you have a unique position now, but back then, did you see the path to where you're... No, I didn't go. I didn't call right away. I was looking through the LA Times, and there was a guy, there was a company looking for a yacht broker. I'm living on a 48, 45-foot Columbia. I'm like, great, let me go interview with this guy. So he call, I call him up. He says, yeah, come on down. I interview. I nail the interview. And I'm thinking, I'll move the boat from Alameda Bay down to Newport, <laughs> and I'll have all my, all my friends from high school, and I'll just party like a rock star. That was wow. my intent. And this guy tells me, uh, I need you to go to the Marina Del Rey location. Okay, I'll go up there. By the way, let's pause for a minute. My first car was a 72 Buick LeSabre convertible. It was cool. I could put 12 kids in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I could I could almost stretch out with my girlfriend and lay down in the back seat. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. My second car was a '79 Firebird with T tops, and it was cool. Damn. Okay. My th my my younger brother wrecked it and totaled it. My third car was a Trans Am, a 1983 Trans Am, and That's it was cool. a cool car. Okay. My fourth car, <laughs> it's embarrassing, was a Volkswagen Dasher. So in college, living on the boat, I had a. I can Volkswagen Dasher. It was a total piece of shit. <laughs> it was actually a car my parents co-signed for that they didn't pay, so my dad repoed it, and here you go. It was wow. a piece of shit. So yeah. I drive from Los Alamitos Bay, which is a beautiful, beautiful place. Have you ever been yeah, there? Yeah, it's in Seal Beach. Yeah, it, yeah a little bit north of, it's beautiful. I mean, I, my, my it's not to like put it all on me, my birthday's on Saturday, and we're taking a boat out from Alamitos Bay. Oh, cool. So Are you going? These guys are coming to I'm the at work. Uh, party. Yeah, he's at work. I'm but at work. We're, we, I just we, wasn't we, invited. We figured it out. <laughs> Tyler's not cool enough, unfortunately. Is Yossi going? But I told Yossi about it. I okay. did, absolutely. So, yeah. so we're right in front of the nicest houses. You go look at Alameda Bay. The nicest houses, right, that's where I'm in front of. Okay, it's it's the scene. for. My dad's never there. He's in New York. He's working in New York back and forth, and I've got the boat. So anyway. It's a nice bay. I, I get the job. I go to Marina del Rey and, and right at Admiralty Way. I mean, is this before before the, the car business? I'm I'm selling. I'm so supposed Joe, to sell yachts. Joe didn't call Carson Toyota. They did, but I didn't go. You held off on it. Oh, right? I, you said I, I don't I, want to sell. I cars. want this yacht job. Okay, so yeah, I go. And you found one, that job on your own. Yeah, okay. I go to the yacht job, and I'm like, these guys are freaking Mickey Mouse. This is a joke. So on the way home, stuck in L.A. traffic on the 405. There's Carson Toyota. That's where I'm supposed to go get the job. <laughs> right? I'm stuck in traffic, so I pull off. I mean, it's just, it's at a snail oh, crawl. Carson so I go in, Toyota. I go, hi, um, Joe Carpello, uh, Trip Smith, the other lawyer, they sent me here. And the sales managers are like, just dicking me around like they normally do, right? <laughs> just a 20-year-old kid. Yeah, yeah, and I'm standing there waiting, and, you know, they're talking to me, and they're like, how do you know us? And, they go, oh, Trip Smith sent you? Okay. After an hour standing around, they don't even ask me questions. Like, All right, you got a job. You got to go get a sales license. I'm like, get a sales How'd license. that happen? Did they call Joe and just yeah. verify who you are? No. Or they just said, they just it's, said okay. it's different Fuck back it, then. Kind of gave no, they just said down. it's okay. Yeah. And guess what? Remember I told you my brother totaled my car? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My brother was 14 when he totaled my car. So guess what? What do you do when you're 14? Call your mom? No, you say that you're the older brother. You say you're me. Uh oh, no. Yeah, so I don't even have a freaking license. My oh, license no. got suspended because he told him my car. <laughs> so Holy now I got this job. Crap. I got to get a sales license. Wait a second. I got to get a, I gotta I gotta get get a driver's license. license reinstated. Wow. And actually, it wasn't hard. I go to the DMV, and they let me have my well, license. Still, that's, that's But it was weird, right? So anyway, 
I start, I blank for two weeks. I suck ass for two weeks. They put you right into sales. <laughs> right into sales. Okay. Suck ass. Were you, were you like on the floor taking ups? Like you just didn't know what to Carson do. Carson Toyota had no showroom. They had a tree. They had 40 salespeople calling ups. What year so was this? What was the 85, year? 1985. So you're, there's no such thing as like. Like internet was barely a thing. What internet? There was no there's internet nothing. in 85. There was zero internet. Mac came out in 84. It wasn't connected to anything other than the programs Bro, that you put into the slot. Okay. So, so you were on. standing outside, yeah. like calling ups yeah. and, and kind of skating people. And I blanked for two weeks. Were you nervous? Uh, not really, because I was in the restaurant business and talking to people was natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what happened in that third week then? Oh, the third week, I'm like, I look to the right, 20 guys. I look to the left, 20 guys. I go, fuck them. I'm going to kick their ass. I'm going to outwork them. I'm going to work every single day. I'm going to work Bell. Yeah, I'm going to be there before the managers show up, and I'm going to stay to the end. So, like, Oves, he enjoys his days off, and it's like customers would come right. in. They would come in. I go, hey, how you doing? You know, 40 guys, hey, how you doing? And they would, of course, way back. That's the oldest trick in the book. Yeah, I saw you were here with Oves the other day, right? Yeah, well, Oves is my partner. I'm, yeah, you were on this <laughs> truck. I just wow. reel him in. And no matter who called it up, I would say, no, I called it too. I'm flipping. I got a 50-50 shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was flipping it's all the time. It's crazy back then. So I want to ask you then, as much as, you know, talent is a benefit when you sell, do you think hard work will beat it in, in the sales business? Hard work does win as long as you have grit and intelligence with focus. Discipline? Uh, you can even be undisciplined, but you're, well, is discipline being there all the time? Because I was there all the time. I, I said, I'm going to be there every single day till I'm number one. So that first month that I did this, I took second. That was my first real month. And you were there bell to bell. Bell. And hey, man, I worked in the, in the restaurant business for a freaking Chinese Vietnamese mother. That's slave labor, bro. You have yeah. no idea. You were there at nine. You, we, we would close at two in the morning. And I would close at two in the morning. And guess what? I got to be back at nine. Yeah. I had no days off. It was seven days a week. Sounds like Kobe. Exactly. No, for real. It he does sound like him. Yeah. That's why I, I really admire him because he's, he's doing exactly what I did. Just be there. Just be there and grab all the ups. When I first, I remember. And now he, you're bit. taking a little more days off. And he you're should. Starting to enjoy. That's why he's only got 24 out. He should have 28 <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, no, man. I know. No, he's, Tell him to enjoy his life. No, he's. he's, he's no, he's you're. Right right you know what? You are not. Your son, too. Your you son is like me. He you, likes to you, take you, his days off. Yeah, that's a problem. It is a problem. Enjoy your. You. Are a bazaari, and the bazaari. <laughs> that's a, nice a guy. That's, a, that's a family who lives in the bazaar, and you know what? Bazaar, yeah, go bazaari. ahead. Bazaari, and you would, you know, you would make your brother work it's four like a market, days straight. By the way, you would make your brother work four days straight. Hey, dude, I'm absolutely gonna, I'm make him go, do the sleep I'm gonna, work. I'm going to go to Sweden for four days. You got the shop. Yeah, <laughs> right, 100%. right. And you know, Vase would go off to Sweden and. And bang it out. I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking obey. And then his brother would take off to Sweden. Yeah. Or maybe <laughs> Norway. Or Denmark. <laughs> no, I, I... Exactly. That's, yeah, that's... that's he, He's actually really about that, bro. <laughs> <That's laughs> no, nah, we're, we're completely different. Bizarre. No, we're different people for we're sure. But I remember different. when I first got promoted into sales, I went to, like get my certification, get my sales license, the 1st to the 15th. Then 15th to the 31st, I sold like 10 cars, but I took, I was like, I, I for sure got lucky, you know? I'm like, I don't think I... No, dude, you're not lucky. You're really skilled. No, 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 no. But this is the first time I ever started sales, so I didn't know what I was you doing. Didn't, you didn't do... Oh, wow, your eyes are so beautiful yet? No, I didn't do that yet. So <laughs> the, the next month, I sold like maybe... 12, 13 cars, and I did. The, I had the same switch in my brain. I said, fuck this shit. I'm going to go next month, and I remember not Garth, our old owners, Scott yeah, Gunderson, Gunderson, Scott Gunderson, not yeah. Matt, Scott. Yeah. Scott was top Higher. of Matt. Yeah. Scott told me, Kobe, if you want to make money in the car business, you have to work every day, and he was the one who told me that, and I'm like, you know what? Why not this month just Fucking try it. Why not? Let's, let me just try it. So I literally did work every single day. You sold 23 cars, 24 cars? I sold 23 cars my first ever month, and I became first place. 
And, and you I, like that feeling. Oh, my God. And you've been it, first place ever since. Ever since. It's been two and a half and you years. Know, that that would be the month. Never that would be me, me once. I was sick. <laughs> yeah, you were sick because he beat you. Not because you were sick. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I had like a it, – it's something that some of the guys, some of the managers at Audi say, maybe this guy needs to see like a real nice paycheck. Or if you, just, says, yeah. if you just sit there and smile but you work many hours – Obviously, I didn't know how to sell cars because there's guys there that were before me. But I learned being there for hours and hours, you learn a little bit faster. So I'm going so. to I'm, I'm take your level of talent to another level. Yeah. Okay? Kind of like, I don't know, Kyler, I hear you're working pretty hard in your focus. Yep. Kind of, sort of. I am. Okay. So, so you guys with this natural talent that you have, if you had an advanced degree, like, economics and a master's in finance and you took the same approach and you were working at PIMCO. Oh, for, I know. Pacific Investment Management Corporation or yeah. you were working at Goldman Sachs or you're working at one of these places. How much money would you make then? Oh, a lot. That's that's yeah. my point. No, I understand. That's I disagree. Point. You disagree with that? I disagree because uh, I've, I've always ran by the same philosophy. A formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. So, What about the combo? But then again, the combo is great. I'm not discrediting master's degree, PhDs at all. But I just don't think it's necessary to succeed. I agree. I agree. But a guy with your hustle and your connivingness, if you had... <laughs> The credentials to get through the door at Goldman Sachs, it would be death. Deadly. It would yeah. be death I, itself. You would destroy everything in your path. I will yeah. say, though, the way I'm wired, I, I just still, even if there was a crazy opportunity in front of me to let all of this go, I still wouldn't do it. I just can't. It, I, I just He's see, built something a little bit different. I, yeah, I, I'm going to compliment you on something. <laughs> and actually, like, your parents... You're, you know, being Armenian, you guys have this inbuilt system. I don't have it. Like, you guys know my best friend is Dikran. Yeah. Right? Dikran Kuftejian. Yeah. I told him, I said, listen, man, you're a great businessman. You know, I know you have to have a job to provide for your family, but you need to go for it. You need to, fit. let's say you fell three, four, five times. Mm -hmm. That sixth time, you're probably going to be a billionaire. D yeah. You know, so you guys have this thing. And I've been observing people for a long time, like not judging people, but the Armenians have something really special. <laughs> they really do. I mm -hmm. kid you not. Yeah. Like I, I wanted. <laughs> no, he's you. right. No, no, I'm dead serious. Oh, what? No, he's I'm right. dead serious. I'm kidding. He's like, giving me a smirk. Like, uh, I thought you were laughing at. <laughs> like, like, no, like no, no, my no. buddy Mike B. Mike is a great Mike, guy. Shout Mike out Beck, Mike. Mike Beckeregian has a great job. He's got a hookah lounge. He's got an Armenian bakery, and I and I told him you're a fucking idiot for doing all this crazy he stuff. Has like eight but he can't businesses. he can't help yeah. it. And guess what? The most successful person in his family is his uncle, <laughs> and we guys should really interview him because he is yeah. he is he is the typical five foot two Armenian guy. <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys worth millions we'll get, and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, the we'll uncle. Get him on. The uncle is. We'll yeah. get him on. He is he is out of. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> the point is, you guys have something like my father, with all his education, could never do what his uncle did mm -hmm. and never make that money. Or how about your dad? Your dad is amazing. What yeah. he's accomplished, it's crazy. You know, where did that come from? That's yeah, amazing. Right? And what yeah. you're going to achieve, you don't know. Or I what, don't know yet. I, what I'm just trying to say is that Kobe with. An advanced degree, working for Goldman Sachs or Pimco or whatever—that's deadly. You're 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 beyond anything you could ever dream of. Yeah. And you know what? As nice as the neighborhood you live in, no, dude. We're talking Bel Air, Hillsboro, yeah, yeah, yeah. something crazy. Yeah. Or you know what? Fuck it, just marry that. <laughs> You've always said that. Just marry into just it. Just marry it. Yeah. <laughs> marry one of the Ecclestone girls or something like yeah. that. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. The that's daughter of the Formula One guy. Just marry one of them. <laughs> Put them together. <laughs> so, I, yeah, go, go, on, go on, go on. No, I was going to say, I do want to go back to, you know, you start making all this money selling these yeah, cars. Yeah, so you're crushing people at Toyota. Yeah, what is so that feeling? You got hooked. 
you know what? I really didn't give a shit about the money. It was and being I, first. Money was like nothing. <laughs> it was like water. It was it was something to be to enjoy, you know. So I'm at the Toyota store. I become a closer, and I become an F and I guy. And these guys in the Toyota world, they don't know anything. They're like, hey, let's go out, right? You guys, mm -hmm. let's go out. Where do we go? Well, at that time, the hottest place in Hollywood at that time, restaurant wise, was Spago. It's still it's there in Beverly Hills, okay. which is a whole nother. It's a whole nother Forrest Gump story, but I, I'm I'm 21 years old and we're going to Spago. Like, hey, yeah, we're gonna go to Spago this week. These dudes that I'm working with, they had no idea of Spago. So I'll just give you like an illustration of Spago back in the day. So it's 1987. I'm 21, turning 22, and they all want to go out. Let's go to Spago. Cool. Do you think you can get a reservation at Spago? No, it's impossible. But I got my hookups. I call Charlie, the bartender. Charlie, brother, I need a table. There's four of us, six of us, eight of us. One. No, man, it's packed. It's packed. I'm like, dude, I don't care. Go talk to Susan Lazaroff, which is Wolfgang Puck's wife at the time. What day was it? It was probably a Thursday or a Friday. It was impossible. Yeah. Ask her, how many bottles of Cristal do I need to buy to get a table? Hold on. Four. Okay. Put four on ice for me. We're coming. Wow. We're talking. It's nine o'clock. We're getting off work. Okay, come on. Let's get the fuck out of here. So we get there at 10, 1030. It's packed. Who's it packed with? Well, there's fucking Paul Anka. You don't know who he is. He's a superstar. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> I shove him out of the way. <laughs> I go right to Charlie. Charlie, open my bottles, bro. Cristal, I'm not talking Dom Perignon, this is Cristal. And we're, Barb was like, kiss, kiss, all right. We go in, and then who walks right by us? Roger Moore, James Bond, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Clint Eastwood. They're walking right by our table. Wow. They're coming in. Yeah, this is like A-list. This is top of the line. This LA is back top then. of the line, yeah. And we're Damn. going to Spago. And you guys regularly. are just some Toyota boys. We're just, I'm Toyota. You're of, like 21 at the time. Okay. I'm only 21. And are you crazy. still in sales at that point? Or? No, I'm in finance now. Okay. okay. I hustle my way out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was a closer going into finance. But anyway, we were going regularly. And by the way, there's a side note. There's a, there's a sales manager named Jay Howell. And he was queer as a $3 bill. And I loved him. And he, we were dear friends. And he lived on Doheny. And uh, hey, I'm serious. I... And he he would he from Doheny to Spago, which is you know where Tower Records is on Sunset, kind of sorta, kind of sorta. Sure. Anyway, it was on top, and and Jay was like, okay, I'll meet you there, and I'm like, cool, meet us there. So Jay would call for a, a limo from the Beverly Hills Hotel to pick him up at Doheny, which is the dumbest thing in the world, and have him drop. There's no Uber, dude, and he would. Oh, there's Jay. And Jay would come to the table, and he would have a bullet. He would have this little device, and he would do lines <laughs> <laughs> at the table. I'm like, Jay, we're here to eat foie gras and have fucking Cristal. You're doing lines at the table. He goes, yeah, I don't need to eat. I'm like, okay, man. <laughs> it was the trippiest thing. Yeah. That's it was wild. so funny. Oh, my gosh. What year was that? 88. 88? Oh, wow. So... 89, I'm in finance. So before you continue, what happened with the Citadel? What, uh, not the no, Citadel. The Citadel's but, over. Oh, okay. So because I'm in the, you were supposed to no, enlist no, in January. I, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in the car business June 14th of 1985. I blanked for two weeks. Now it's July. Now I'm number two guy. Then August, I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to work any, I'm not going to take any days off. And by the way, you know, I'm kind of racially ambiguous and there's a white boy team and so on and so forth. They start attacking me. They're like, fuck him. He's not going to be number one, number two. They start attacking me. True story. Total bigotry. And so they're feeding one guy on the team to be the top guy. So I go to George Franco, Jorge Franco, uh, Mexican sales manager, one of my mentors. I go, Mr. Franco, these white boys, they're after me. He goes, yeah, what do you want to do about it? I go, you know what I want to do about it? You know I'm working every day. He goes, yeah, you're working really hard. I go, don't put my numbers on the board because it was mechanical board with the magnets you know like okay. only units well, that's old school. do me a favor don't put my numbers on the board let them think that they're beating me he goes oh you're very smart so mike schriefer was his name they fed this guy 
He's like, oh, we kicked your ass. You're a one-month wonder, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. All right. End of the month, the final board comes <laughs> up. I beat him by 13 cars. Wow. Smoked yeah. his ass. Wow. Yep. It was it was Badass. definitely my mom's CIA shit. <laughs> Vietnamese trickery. Yep. Bam. It's like, what happened? He got packed. Oh, totally packed. He blew out. <laughs> <laughs> he blew out. Yeah. So, um, wow. yeah. And I'll tell you a, a kind of a mean story later, and I got total revenge on his ass. But Get into it now. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So later on, we ended up working at Marina Del Rey Toyota because the dealership, Carson, the guy was building a multi-million dollar house and he really fucked up our pay. And by this time, my brother, my younger brother's at UCLA. So I'm like, hey, I'll just move to UCLA. We'll just room together. I'm not in college, but you know, we can live there and I'll work at Marina Del Rey Toyota. And so there was that guy, Mike Schriefer. And so we were on the same team and we were cool about it. He knew. That he met his match. Yeah. So we were yeah. cool about it. Anyway, shortly thereafter, I get recruited back to Carson to be a closer. And I'm... And Wait, I'm, so they weren't the same dealership that merged? You left Carson to go to Marina Del Rey? Yeah. And, and then, then you came went back? back to Carson. Yeah, and I came Why back to Carson. Why did you move initially? Because it was a better pay plan and this and that. So yeah, I came sure. back to Carson as a closer. And I did really well. So the GM at that time says, hey, do you have any other... I said, what about Mike Schriefer? So I'm doing him a solid, even though he tried to fuck me. Okay. So I bring him back. And first I rob his team and I give him my shitty guys and I take his team and his dragon ass, you know, because remember what, what I really want is revenge. Okay, I want to make this guy suffer. <laughs> and this is the same guy that yeah. started beating you up and... Started attacking me. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Started yeah. packing me. So anyway, long story short, you know, I am just destroying him. And the GM says, hey, you better get your buddy to get going. So I go to him and I go, Mike... You know, what are you doing? You got to, you're making me look bad. What? They want to fire me? I go, yeah, they're going to blow your ass out. Fuck that. And he blows out. <laughs> True story. So he blows out. No big deal. So a little satisfaction on my part, right? A little <laughs> bit of dirty revenge. <laughs> the ultimate revenge was later on when I'm in finance. I see this application come over the fax machine, which you guys don't know about this. That's prior to, that's prior to uh, email. His app comes over. His credit's wrecked. Wait, so he <laughs> no. tried to buy a car, car later? Yeah. yeah. Dang. And his credit was wrecked. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was, was the last laugh. laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what he's doing now? I have no idea. Oh, my gosh. Maybe Did he'll you watch this. You didn't anticipate you'd be in the industry your whole life? I tried to get out so many times. Why? It's a fucking car business. Why'd you get out? <laughs> same reason. Okay, same yeah. thing. But, but I, I found out. See if, but if I, I want you to know the something. The car business is very much like a girl. You're disloyal to it. That is so true. She's going to serve you revenge when you return. There's no return. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> okay. no. Yeah. Fuck okay, no. Mr. Bazzari. <laughs> you're going to end up with a Golden Spoons franchise or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just not, to go to Just not to go to the Golden Spoons. Okay, so let me, let me say something. Yeah, for, 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 for me, I never, and I'm sure you had the same oh. uh, feeling when you were my age. I never wanted to be the 60-year-old guy selling cars. I'm 58, motherfucker. Yeah, but you, you're a fucking GM. That's different. He's okay. not just GM. Whatever. You're Tell him what whatever. you're doing now. You're, no. you're so, very so, high So up. I, I never wanted to be the guy. I just want to be Gar's right hand. That's all. Okay, I never wanted to be the guy to slave away day by day up until I'm 60, 70, I have kids, etc. I didn't want to do that, which is why I got out now because I feel like if I didn't, I would have been in there forever. Maybe. So, but what if you were the next Garth Blumenthal? Work my way up the food what chain. What if you were the next Garth Blumenthal? That's a different story. Oh, a base. Right? You have oh, to take. What if? Oh, yo, see. Yeah, what if? It's always going to be a what if, but we'll see what life has planned for me. I'm still very young, and I have You that. know, I actually envy you that you have the ability to go hustle and put people together on the street and make <laughs> your thing and do your deal. It's fun. But you know what? It's I have my a time. lot of risk, too. I have my time. Yeah, but, you know, you're young, and maybe you shouldn't have time. Maybe you should. And I'm a, and I'm a huge advocate of you should work your fucking ass off. <laughs> for sure. I am. 
But <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> because why are you you're not laughing? a worker. Why is everyone you're not a worker no, ass off you kind of just, guy. You don't, you don't do that, man. You do it on the street. No, you're very no. You do. You do. Let me give you the obeys. The ultimate obeys. He'd have a nice shop. That's in a good location. <laughs> a lot of chicks walking by. <laughs> and it does enough money so he can go on vacation. <laughs> and that's it. No. Like if he had a clothing shop inside of Fashion Island that made enough gross and did enough. You, you, the thing about you, though. I'd fuck off to Europe. Absolutely. No, the exactly. Thing, the thing that he's absolutely right. But the way you are, too, is like you won't work as maybe much or hard but when you do have when an opportunity when you do have no, an opportunity dude, you're you make money talented, you're very you good get at get away sales. with being talented exactly you're very talented but to kyler's first question is like does hard work trump right talent? yeah it, talent and so you really need right here is combo right there is combo He's, they're doing both but remember yeah. some of those months where you like tried Tried. Bro. One or two. But you fucking and you kicked helped, ass. Bro, you made 20 plus grand. More. Yeah, but the thing was for me is, you know, you'd have days where you don't make shit. Actually, you go negative. You buy lunch, whatever, et cetera. Or you have days that you make a five, six grand voucher. And I still drive home with the same look on my face. Like, yeah. fuck this. Yeah. I was there. I was That's one philosophy. And, that, that was one philosophy because he doesn't go home very... You work 25, no, you work a little more. You work 26, 27 days a month, and you sell 26, yep. 27 cars. So you, yeah. on average, you're always selling cars. You might yeah. blank, but you might sell three. Yeah, exactly. You know? And you, well, I was a, a floor manager when you came aboard, but when I sold cars at Fletcher. And that I position went, was completely different when, for me. I understand, yeah. but when I sold cars at Fletcher and I sold 45, 50, 55 cars a month, do you think I blank much? No. How, how do you blank much? You know, and I did take my days off, you know. So I worked 25 days and I sold 55 cars. So how do you do that? Because you do all the basic things that you hate doing. And yeah, we blanked. Martin and I, we blanked once in a while. But how could I blank if I was a store closer for everybody, even though I wasn't the floor manager? Remember? Here's, so when you would go in and close deals, remember. you got half deals for Of it. course. And I told the whole floor, hey, man, I don't want your laydowns. Give me your impossible deals that you can't make. So Ali Moraveji. Moraveji, give me your people <laughs> that you don't want to make. And that was a lot. David right? Varjoy. David Varjoy. Hey, if you have an Isfahani guy, you give Isfahani Iran. They're very smart, shrewd business people. Give me those people. Ask Cameron Tabesh what I did on the Isfahani guy. And I got so full Jack. MSRP. Do you remember that? Cameron? No, 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 no. The Isfahani guy who bought a car from Cameron and I, and I got full MSRP. And I brought every Persian guy at, at Fletcher Jones Newport. I said, meet so-and-so. He's from Isfahan. And I would tell no, you him, didn't introduce I full me. popped him. <laughs> Obey, yeah, tell the like viewers what, what, what is Isfahan. Isfahan's a city in Iran. It's, it's like being from L.A. or being from exactly. Vegas. But what it's are they known different. for? Yeah. Um, greedy. They're known for no, being, being greedy. shrewd or cheap. Yeah, not greedy. Shrewd and or cheap. greedy for sure. <laughs> okay, cheap too. Yeah, shrewd. Um, smart people, very smart. Persians are generally smart for sure. Very um, smart. Yeah. See, Have for me, ever? I'm I'm a very like American. You're Persian you're totally white white. I'm yeah. totally white yeah. I was born in Iran. But when I was two, my mom took me, and I was raised in England. I was in England till I was about 11 or 12. How'd you like that? England was... Did uh, you get your ass kicked for being No, because... Different? No, not at all, because, like, I, I, was, I was, like, one, two when I was there. So it was, like... And, you, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of Pakistani oh, okay. people there. And, you know, I kind of, like, blended in, I suppose. So, so you didn't uh, go to the white schools? No, I did. Okay. But the area that I... I, did, I, I wasn't in London. I was a little norther, uh, northern... Um, and so I grew up there for 10 years and it was cool. I mean, it was miserable. Can you, you know, speak you with a British accent, yeah, please? Yeah, I, I could, I could turn it off and on. But, turn um, it on. He flips it for girls at the bar. It's kind of awkward going back. It's, it's a little, um, I feel like my accent's changed now. It's more of a, it's more of a northern uh, Yorkshire accent. Um, and it's I, also, it, it, it doesn't sound as real as it used to be. It sounds like I'm faking it, honestly. 
Uh, what? Whoa. <laughs> No, Keep he's rolling. good at it. Keep rolling. Yeah. Combine the both. There. No, what if it's no combination. F- what if and then when I came back to the US, I remember, I remember being, I was in seventh grade and my English teacher was like, aren't you from America? And I was speaking in an American accent like I am now. And, and then I switched back. I was like, I, I can go back to English. And everyone just laughed at me. They're like, oh, this guy's Amazing. not from England. So that's, that's where my English accent or, or American accent like, Came well, through. I and, don't and think now you I, should speak with an American accent. You should speak with That's natural bit. now. My American no, accent is speak natural. With a, speak it with it makes him look accent. way more intelligent. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You just, what are you on about? <laughs> no, you look, it, it, you it, look it, like it, a dumbass when you speak uh, no, no, American you, English. You know what? It, and, it, and it's not like it's not like a London girls. accent where it's like posh and like like tea and crumpets. It's more northern like West Yorkshire where it's slang. Dude, That's like even better. Girl, this, this, dude is even even better. <laughs> this dude is a geezer. You're a yeah, definite I'm, geezer. I'm a proper <laughs> West Yorkshire lad. Yeah, for sure. Is that you and Keith May? <laughs> Keith May, where is he? No, he's from... Uh, he's from... Um, Can I tell you? He's, he's from the West End, but out. he pretends <laughs> that he's from the East End. Oh, he's, so he's not a Cockney. But he, he likes that image of being a Cockney. He's a brawler. I think you should he's use it on women. You know what a brawler yeah. is? When you guys go in November, what's a brawler? So there's a, like a little spat. Can I take a guess? Go ahead. A brawler. Okay. <laughs> what what no, are we I'm taking go, a Kyler. guess, dude? <laughs> take a guess. You know Spelling what? Just go ahead. Go brawler. ahead. Whatever. No, go. guess. You go said ahead. you were going to guess. Okay. Is it when two lads are fighting in the bar and then one gets knocked out? Okay, very good. Close. What? But the brawler... But the brawler is the guy who comes out of nowhere and he just, boom, decks the guy. Wait, that was like a wild guess. Bra- I was almost okay. there. Two guys are fighting or wow. arguing, and there's a guy who's the brawler who comes out of nowhere to protect his friend and just decks the other guy. Like a cheap shot? Cheap shot. Is, is Keith that way in business? Do I have to answer that? <laughs> no. Your smile, I already answered it. <laughs> He's a brawler. And you know what? When Garth returned, he got decked. <laughs> right? Yeah. You were there. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Fuck, that was... Yeah. You think Garth would ever come on the podcast? Oh, for sure. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. You got to have him watch this episode. Oh, I don't know if he'll want to watch that <laughs> scene of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's so much we haven't even, like, touched on yet. Let's, we just kind of skipped over, like... Let's go. So we're kind of going things. through the life of career, and yeah. you guys got to think about... You know, education, no education. Is Probably there right. anything you want to ask uh, us? As because I remember you started off by saying I kind of want to turn this around and kind of see yeah, your sp- it, perspective. Like, do you guys really understand what you want out of life? Uh, I are, don't think I can answer for everyone here, but you? personally, I feel like we're we're no. I'm still young enough to where I'm like, what the fuck do I want to do with the rest of my life? Well, whatever that is, and you're allowed to change it, write it down. Whatever you're not doing now that you really want, write it down. Really write it down. Write it down. I'll give you an example. Do you guys know who Grant Cardone is? Yeah. Do you know that Elena, his wife, it's her birthday, right? And they're in Monte Carlo right now? No, I didn't didn't know that right now. So, Elena, did you know I was in Grant's wedding in 2005? No. Yeah. Oh, so you guys are buddies. Yeah. You and her. Are you, you buddies? And his wife or Wait, no? You, Grant. Oh, oh, I was oh say, no. Oh, I meant Grant. Oh, I didn't think no, you Grant. Know. So Elena, on her, I believe it was a post-it note, she wrote down exactly what kind of husband she wanted. And she never deviated. She wrote it down. Think about how powerful writing down in, in the power of intention. She wrote down exactly what she wanted in a man to be her husband be the father of her children and grant wasn't that guy grant chased her and chased her and chased her and chased her and grant turned into that guy that she wrote down think about that oh my gosh i've seen a video about him talking about think about that so so that that's just her power of intention of what she wanted and she wrote it down she told him no, 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 She shut no, him down no. for two Year, years. Years. Yeah. I think I've seen a So what I'm trying to say, if that's true, if writing it down is so true, and I, and I mentioned this today in the manager's meeting, I said, yeah, I, I have my goals written down. and They're, they're pretty ridiculous, outrageous goals. And I said, Garth, 
one of the goals is that I would own a golf stream. And I don't have that goal. And I still want that goal. But you know what? I'm closer today than I was yesterday. You know why? Because you're going to get it, Garth. <laughs> and I'm going to get free rides. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So, you, so you're a big believer in manifestation? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so rather than being a meandering wanderer, yeah. like you just meander and wander around and kind of like go through life. Find it as it goes. And, you know, you less, you less. I don't know, Zach, yeah. but I know you kind of meander. Oh, I'm going to get I, up. I'm a little I'm gonna, meandering, I'm gonna, I'm going to go look in, in Craig's list and see what I can buy. Maybe, oh, fuck it. I spent enough time next. You know, that's kind of meandering around <laughs> rather than... Bro. You know, you should write down, I want to be the Shah of Iran. <laughs> write that shit down. I think you can Bro, do it. Write that shit down, manifest it. If you're going to be the Shah of Iran, what do you got to do? You're well, gonna there's a lot of shit to do if you're going to be the Shah of Iran. I, I, I'm being facetious, but I'm just saying I that's just how saying, powerful I, I know, I know the, moral, the yeah. intention is. So maybe you should write down, I want to marry a, a girl that is a 10. I want her to be independently wealthy. I want her parents to be deceased. And I want this, and I want that, and I want that. No, because you want the headaches. <laughs> right? Well, I'm thinking if I meet the girl of my dreams, but her parents are still alive, I mean, what the fuck? No, because they're going to interfere with your agenda of whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Okay? I so ju oh, I'm just saying, yeah. write down exactly what you want. And remember, you can change it. You can take that post it out and throw it away and start another one. Think about it. Write that stuff down and go for it. And that's for everyone out there in cyberspace. Write it down. Go for it. I will say I've never written something exactly down and done that, but it's worth a try, right? What do you have to lose? Exactly. A post-it note? Exactly. A couple minutes of your time? What if you're Elena Cardone and you wrote it down and you get exactly what you want? What if you put thought into it, intention into it, and you get really what you want? Are you still close with Grant? I have his number in my phone, but... Uh, FaceTime him. We, we, we don't... Oh, come on the pod. Um, <laughs> you know what? I, I did Scientology because of Grant, and I got a lot of benefit out of it, and I'm not going to say anything negative about Scientology. They got some cool shit, especially when you're in trouble and so forth. It can really help people, but I don't consider myself a Scientologist. I'd, I'd like to ask you, though, just how did you guys even meet, you and Grant Cardone? Car business. He oh, sells wow. seminars, and I'm the GM. I get to say yes, I get to say no. Yeah. So he was doing the seminars way back in 05, too. Oh, he was doing it in 95. I oh, think. wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's an amazing thing, too, because I didn't even know that about him. It just goes to show how, like, even with his content stuff and why he has an audience now, that stuff takes time. So much Because he was time. bouncing around from dealership, dealership. And yeah. we need to all understand that. Because yeah. even with this podcast, this uh, is going to uh, take years. Let me tell yeah. you a, a good, relevant story to you guys about Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone has a twin brother. Did you know that? No. His name is Gary. At the time, I think Gary had more money than Grant. Gary was an oil trader. I mean, he would trade refineries. He, would tr he worked for this company. And he was a really smart guy. He looks just like Grant. And really amazing guy. So Grant lived at 1412 Oriole Street in the Bird Streets above Sunset Plaza. And that house used to be Lionel Richie's house. Mm. And it was bomb. It was wow. fucking bomb. It didn't look like much from the outside, but when you got inside, it was bomb. His master bedroom, you can go to the shower and you can go into the jacuzzi and you can climb over the jacuzzi and you can swim across the pool all the way to the other side and pop up into the kitchen. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. And it had a tennis court and all this stuff. Okay, so Gary Cardone just by chance buys a house at the bottom of Oriole and some famous person owned it. I think at that time he paid five million and I think I could be wrong, but I think Ryan Seacrest bought it from Gary. Anyway, it was Christmas. My kid was a 10, 10 years old. My oldest son, D Yossi's oldest brother, uh, Davis, and we were all into uh, Halo. I think Halo 2 came out. Okay. Um, so it's Christmas, Christmas Eve. Davis and I go over to Gary's house, and we're going to have a fucking epic Halo battle. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> epic. Oh, We've got the decibels turned up at 90. Wow, that's loud. Gary, Grant, and Jim, me, James, we're smoking Cuban cigars. 
we are chain smoking one, putting it out, and we're playing Mad Dog. Halo. When was this? In the nineties? Uh, two thousand five, two thousand four. Okay, so becoming two thousand, and we're playing like Mad Dogs, hours and hours <laughs> and hours. Finally, we blew the speaker; it, it cut out, and my eyes are pretty bloodshot. My kid was—he was only eleven. <laughs> His eyes were shut. He's like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> he walks outside. He walks outside. And he comes in and he goes, you guys see the smoke? And we go, no, because we're in it. You know, we're in the smoke. We don't know. Anyway, it was about midnight at this time. I get him in my SL63, and we race back like a mad dog through all the canyons because we lived in Bel Air. He was so sick. I felt so bad. It was Christmas Eve. Oh. I'm like, I'm sorry. I put him in bed. I go, you want any Tums or anything? <laughs> we fucked him up. But it was a good time with Gary and Grant Cardone. It was pretty fun. It was crazy. They're, they they literally are like teenage kids. I mean, what you see on TV is true, but if we were all with Grant and Gary, we would all be smoking Cuban cigars and yeah. we'd play playing playing. video games. Yeah, that's what they that's do. That's so cool. What cool. can you, like, obviously you're general manager of whatever, whatever you've been general manager of multiple yeah. stores like what is it tough to take that next step to becoming a general manager or when do you think someone would be ready for that step well that's that's but you were general manager before because that's a very tough well. position okay, so you once not, told me we were in the lunchroom of fletcher jones and you once told me i did this this and this i'm the rabbit now chase me do you remember this conversation yeah, i told you you did I, I said i became a gm at 28 hurry up yeah. Yeah. So a couple things. One, you have to be delusional. What does that mean? You cannot accept any sense of reality. Well, no, I'm only 28. I can't do this. Fuck that. You have to go for it. You know, I wanted to be a general manager so bad, but I was in finance for six years. And, uh, and I, I think due to my mom, I always carried myself in a more mature setting and then my dad being an engineer i always read a lot so i had a big bank of knowledge so well, that you being I, in the car business and surrounding yourself with people older than you helps well, too not, not right? even that no those people use me as a leader always always so but i wanted more and i was so stupid i was so delusional that i was sending letters to dealers like i'd like to be a general manager i could help your start blah 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 i mean just going for it and then finally the guy at Carson Toyota, who did kind of know me, he was going to lose his dealership. He was performing so poorly that he was going to lose his store. And that's your home store. That's so my home store. That's my him. Greenpeace store. That's so, awesome. So wow. he, got, he got called into the factory, and they said, we want to terminate your franchise. We want to sell your store. And that's it. And he actually told the, the regional manager and his staff, fuck you, and he walked out. He called me that day. That was June 23rd of 93. And it's my day off. I'm in the pool when I take the call. And he goes, what do you know that I don't know? And you're right. You've forgotten more than I'll ever know. And I started going through a litany of a, a list. And I said, you know, I can even fix a problem that you have with the factory. I didn't know what I was talking about. It was coming out of my ass. Mm -hmm. He slammed the phone down on me. That was June 23rd of 93. So his rep came back a few weeks later on July 15th of 93. And... Her name was Deanne Duclos, and she's like, Bert, you got to sign this. The factory's serious. We got to sell your store. And he goes, no, I'll take it under advisement. I got to talk to my lawyer. And after she left, okay, come in and tell me your so lies. he called you back. He called me back. Okay, wow. come in and tell me your lies. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is it. This is a seminal moment of me having an opportunity to become a GM. I'm going to close his fucking ass. Mm -hmm. So total intention. My thoughts were a little more organized because it had been rattling around in my brain, I, you know, hoping that he would call me back. And I sat down with him. I went through like 15 points. And he goes, well, don't you want to talk to your wife about this? This is my ex-wife. I go, no. I'm making 20 grand a month and you're offering me five grand. No. <laughs> and you're offering me 10% of net and there's no net. So... You have to be delusional. One, I was delusional to think that I could do it. Two, you got to be a risk taker and say, fuck it and go for it and go all the way in. And then I blew out of there because he didn't honor his commitment that he made to me. What? You promised to sell me 10% of the store. 
and he didn't oh. do it. You didn't get it on, on paper? No, I mean, those guys don't put anything on paper. But he promised me that, and when he reneged on that promise, I was out of there. I blew. Yeah. Did you sue? No, man. I blew. I, I have a question because I'm someone outside of, I've never obviously been in the car business. What is the benefit of being a general manager versus sales? Like, what does that position look like? I, I'm just curious. Okay, like, so in the car business, the typical general manager makes today 10000 in salary and 10% of the net profit. Mm. So back in those days, in 93, I was making five fifty a year. I was 28, 29. Wow. That was a lot of money back then. That's great. My house was 200, you know. That's My next house was was 265. Yeah. And it was a lot of money. Especially back then. Oh, my It was my a gosh. lot of money. Yeah. So even to, money. that's that's crazy. I didn't know that. So today, general managers make a salary of 120 a year. Typically. Typically, plus 10%, 10 of, of the net. Oh, wow. So if you don't make any net, you make nothing. You make 10 grand. Yeah, I know some general managers that make ten grand a month. Wow! And and I know a general manager, Toyota guy, used to be a partner, and he needed a job, so he was working at a Subaru store for a major company, and he put his daughter at uh, Calabasas Audi, and she made twenty grand her first month, and <laughs> her dad made ten grand. Wow! Because there's no net. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's unreal. Yeah, I mean, I was asking that because. Like I said, outside of the car business, I have no idea all this stuff, but it's really interesting. It really is. It's it's real. It's great training ground for a really big business. But you know what, Kyler? Don't join us. Keep doing your own thing. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, <laughs> don't don't ever. We so gotta, you got out of uh, you you blew out. Yeah. And uh, well, you didn't get blown out, but you left and got another job in the car biz. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another job. And another job. And so then how did you, uh, how did you meet, uh, we don't have to get into that, you. Garth and how you got into. That, that's a cool story, man. It was uh, 2007. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm at Keys, Mercedes Benz. We're doing well. Keys is killing it still. Um, the Mercedes we, store, we, right? We, Aren't they the, second? Th they're a third or fourth. Second. Who's second? Um, Ontario is. Ontario, it's like. What? They're owned by the same people too, yeah. No. Keith May does a great job. Wow. So we, we, we have a dealer meeting in Monte Carlo. So Howard Keys, Howard Tenenbaum, and uh, Shelly and I, we, we go on a golf stream and we fly to Nice, France, and it's really cool. You should try private travel. It's really cool. Is it worth the money? Absolutely not. But is it worth the money? Absolutely. Well, when you buy <laughs> well, yours one day, you'll take it. <laughs> No, you you guys, <laughs> no. right there. That yeah. Tyler's gonna he, do he, it. He'll do it. You're for gonna us. do it for the tax. You do Shout it for out, the tax. Zil. That's true. We can write that off. Shout out, Zil. <laughs> Shout out, Zil. Yeah. So 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 it's really worth it. And that night, for the the second night was dinner at our party, which was Howard Keys, billionaire, Howard Tenenbaum, multimillionaire, and me. And there was Garth. It was Garth and his first wife. That was the first time I actually met Garth. Talked to Garth. Had a conversation with Garth. And and it was cool. And we actually had Billy Joel, like Billy Joel's right there, and he performed for us. And it was wow. Wild. Wow. It was wow. And that was in Monte Carlo? In Monte Carlo. Wow. And guess what? We're going to Garth's wedding soon. We're that's in South France, France, right? Yeah, yeah that's wow, next that's month. Awesome. Yeah, is Paul Kraft going? I don't know. I don't think so. It's probably for the we're, we're gonna We're going to see who <laughs> Garth's real friends are. And who his yeah. Friends are. Oh, for sure. I, I did want to say, because throughout this whole entire conversation, one thing I noticed, well, I, of course, already know with Kobe, I know with you, and now you as well, which I knew before prior conversations, just all of you guys have traveled the world in, a, in, a, in your own way. And I think whether you know it or not, I think that plays a huge role in how good you are at sales. Because at the end of the day, it is a relationship with someone just talking to people. Adapt. Yeah, and and for me, helps. when I look at you guys like that, I haven't done enough traveling or seeing people and adapting to different situations. So it it really I don't know. But you, you have the luxury of living in an area where it's so diverse. That's true. So, but do you guys so agree you need with to that? Travel. You need to travel. You need to travel more, but more of what it is for me at least. I know you kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but it was being 
uncomfortable so many times at a young age, walking into a locker room of a group of 20 guys and I have to make the starting 11 when I played professional soccer. These guys hid my cleats my first day of training, threw them out in the rain. Stuff like that, like yeah. you you have to be uncomfortable. You got to deal with stuff like that. So that way now when I'm at my job or even when I started sales, I was never afraid to talk to anyone. Someone walks through the door, they want to talk to us. It's not like me walking into a locker room with 25 people. They don't want to talk to me. They want to eat my head off. This American kid wants to take our spot and he's getting paid all this and lives on the beach in Spain. Yeah. That's when I signed for a Spanish club. When I signed in Scotland, like I said, they were brutal. My first day of training, they giving, they're giving me my kit, my yeah. shorts, my yeah. jersey, all my stuff. And there was a black boot rule. You can only wear black cleats. Yeah. When you earn, you can wear yellow, orange, everything. So that club that I played for, Cowden Beath, the, the you, you, like at the youth level, you have to wear black cleats. You have any sort of color, you'll get released. Released means fired. Yeah. So I had my brand new black boots, and I put them in my section of the locker. I didn't even have my own section. I put it on the floor in the corner, but I knew I was going to fucking eat these guys apart. I was a better player than them. And I go get my kit from the assistant coach. Even the coaches are kind of looking at me funny. I come back in, my boots are gone. And I call them boots or cleats. I'm like, I've been around the block, you know? So I'm like, okay, these guys hid my boots. So I look outside, it's pouring rain. My boots are soaked, just soaked. And it was going to get soaked anyways, but just putting my new socks on and putting my wet boots on. It's very hard to put cleats on when they're wet. Yeah. You know that. So, so you gritted it out. And you I fun playing gritted, the rain gritted though, it yeah. out. I had to win the team over. I had to kind of be uncomfortable at first. And then now I still talk to a few guys that are actually going to come take a train up and meet up with me, Yossi, and all of us. So this stuff like that, you know what I mean? Edinburgh. We could. Fl- we we, we could. take the train to Edinburgh. We have a five-day gap where we can just do We have a five-day gap. So for all the viewers watching. I'm going to take these guys to where I grew up, Shoot too. a podcast there, man. Yeah, we're going to shoot a podcast oh, for with sure. Yossi. We're, for all the viewers watching, um, James's son, Yossi, me, Oves, Kyler, Zach is working on his passport right now. We're all flying to, to London on August 10th. So it's opening week of the uh, Premier League. And so we're, we're all very into soccer. We're all very too. into soccer, so we're all going to be there, but... It's not too far from Scotland, so we should maybe head out there. Well, it's eight hours by train. It's only a two-hour flight, yeah. and you're good to go. And the flight's like 25 euros What about or pounds. the Scottish girls? I actually met a girl out there that I really liked. Her name was Neve. You were like 14. So I what? was 15. Especially then. Bro, I liked so her a lot. We should put a photo of her right now, <laughs> Christian. No, that's, that'd be super weird, but <laughs> um, nice. she's gonna find out. Oh my, yeah. my yeah. love is coming. I mean, she, I bet she, she does she, only yeah, she, I don't care. She, she probably, probably will watch has this. Like three kids right now. No, she Guaranteed. doesn't. I still follow her. Oh no, kid. Yeah. So is she, she uh, OnlyFans girl. No. That's what I was. Let's find out what handle she has. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I uh, I. Met a bunch of Scottish girls, and there were actually very cute girls in Scotland. Believe it or not, I remember my dad. My dad's going to watch this episode. My dad's like, oh, you're going to f- – they're all fat and they're ginger. You know, they're all <laughs> Scottish. They're missing teeth. You know what I mean? <laughs> all fucking – you know what I mean? That's like Scotland. But I met beautiful girls, and I went to high school there, and there's beautiful blonde girls and brunettes. And, yeah, there was a ton of gingers, but, you know, I stayed away from those. But it was great. I had a blast in Scotland. I, I learned a lot living in Europe for like three, four years. I always I always think it's the craziest thing, Kobe, just walking into a Scottish school bus. Like, just think about it. It was that. nuts. High school in Scotland. Yeah, There's it no was crazy. Buses. It's just whatever it is, the train. What is no, it? a school bus. I took a school bus, bro. They had school buses? Yes. Yeah, they had school buses. I, uh, I walked. How, <laughs> did you walk? We were, I was a little too far to walk, but some guys walked. I walked home I from walked school and took once. The bus, the public bus. Oh my god! You know, public transport is huge. In I Europe. remember there was a right outside the school. There was a barber shop, and it was Turkish guys. Oh, funny! And they knew my last name, Isaulu. Yeah. It says it on the back of my jersey. They loved you. Oh my god! I go in for a haircut, and they're like, "Oh my god, me American Turkish buddy, come here, have a seat." And they give me the craziest fade. Like, <laughs> mid-skin, 
And then he goes, oh, you have a big game. You're playing against Celtic next week. Celtic is big club in Scotland. Yeah. So they did a signature. You guys probably remember this. They put a line through oh, the side no. of my head. I used to get a line, too. Like a Phil Foden, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, they put a line on the side of my head, and they go, okay, we're going to take photos of you. So they take photos of me. When you make it big professional, we're going to remember this. And That's awesome. I come in two weeks later, and my face is on the wall. Huge. It's probably still there right now. It was massive. Oh, you got to go show up to those guys. Yeah, but it's unbelievable. I had an orange Nike shirt on. Like, it's crazy. So there's it's probably still up there, but yeah, it's wild. It. I know. But, yeah, now I'm in the car business, and it's totally yeah. different life, but I love it. And it's a good adrenaline. It's like a drug selling a car. It's different. My life is totally different now, but I could say every day going to work, I do like my job. I, I'm grateful to my time in the car business. I met the most interesting people. Oh, yeah. I met you guys and yep. so forth. Uh, I met Garth, and it's it really is fascinating. It's crazy. Um, and I just want you guys to whatever you want to achieve it, and the faster, the better, the more time you'll have to travel and and see the world. And you know, if I ever get invited back, we we should talk about traveling. We should talk about yeah, absolutely. Oh, we let's will. do it. We had an episode like our fifth or sixth episode. We talked about traveling, yeah, like and it was an internal before. podcast. So we're gonna have you on again, hundred yeah. percent. Sure. Awesome. But um I think that wraps that it wraps up. it up. <laughs> cool. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please yeah. like, subscribe. Shout um, out Zill. Shout out Zill Media. But basement talk. If you guys like want to see anything else, please let us know in the comments. But thank you, Zach. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back on the yes, pod sir. too. Kyler, yeah, always, always, you, always James, good. Thank you so much Ovace. for coming. But James, thank, thank you so much. Boys. Cheers. And Cheers. we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.